What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie298 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And I know some of you are tired of listening to me talk about the surgery, uh, but the more I talk about the surgery, the more questions that come in. So I thought today I would just answer a bunch of the community's questions all in one video so we can point people to that video when they ask a question I've already been asked a thousand times. I also want to answer these questions for the people out there who are considering bariatric surgery and have been looking to me to help guide them. Uh, but here's a general piece of advice for those people and for anybody else watching this video. If you're struggling with your weight, if you're struggling with a mental issue, if you're struggling with a physical issue or anything along that lines, take this piece of general advice. Start working on that stuff right here, right now today. Speak with a family member or a friend. Speak with a therapist. Get into therapy. Work with a nutritionist. Work with your general practitioner. Start working on the stuff that makes you miserable today because if you start working on it today, it'll be that much sooner when you're finally past that part of your life. This is advice I wish I'd given myself two decades ago. Um, a little late for me, but it's not too late for you. Get your shit together today and you'll be a lot happier when this video is over. Start the work you need to do. Consult the people that are there to help and get the work done. Are they removing fat or making your stomach smaller or both? That is surprisingly the number one question that I get the most often. Boogie, are you getting liposuction or gastric bypass? What is the difference? How does all this work? The surgery to remove fat is most commonly referred to as liposuction. What they do is they go into an area of a body and they remove two to three pounds of fat. And this is generally something that's uh, someone who's already very skinny gets. If they have a bit of a pudge around their stomach or a little bit of fat on their thighs and they want to look better naked, uh, bodybuilders and people along that lines will get that fat removed because it's hard to burn that fat from a specific area. Area, your body naturally needs fat so if you want to go on from a specific area that's a cosmetic surgery that those people can get and you can see here it makes a hell of a difference but here's the thing they won't do that for someone my size it's really only good for four or five pounds of fat it's not good for four or five hundred pounds of fat the surgery I'm getting, which is featured here, basically, uh, it does do exactly what you said. It reduces the size of my stomach. My stomach will go from its full size, which will be bypassed, uh, and it will leave a new stomach about the size of an egg. And with that smaller stomach, I'll be able to take in a heck of a lot less food than I'm used to eating, and that will guarantee I will lose weight. With such a small stomach, wouldn't you have problems obtaining nutrients for your body to function correctly? Actually, this is one of the biggest problems. I'll go from eating far too much food to having difficulty eating enough food for the better part of a year. Uh, but fortunately, they make plenty of supplements, plenty of dietary stuff, plenty of, of things that will make sure that I get the right amount of protein, the right amount of water, and all of the other vitamins that will come with that. Why not just eat less or eat better foods? And that's what it really comes down to for a lot of the younger people who are watching this video right now. You should definitely spend your time doing as much dieting and exercising as you can because you were probably one of the people that are going to react very, very well to diet and exercise. And it is absolutely the first thing you should consider doing before surgery. But for those of you who have been watching me here on YouTube for the last five years, you've seen, seen me gain and lose the same 40, 50 pounds over and over and over and over again. Get down to 500, get back up to 580. Get down to 500, get back up to 580. We've used diet and exercise to lose some weight, nearly 100 pounds every time we do it, uh, but then we eventually fall off the horse and we gain the weight back. And for people like me, this is what that surgery is for. And obviously, I would like to just give it one more go to get on the horse and stay on the horse. The problem is with my history, I know it's very unlikely, and my window of opportunity here is closing. My diabetes is getting out of control, my blood pressure is getting out of control, and I could drop dead at any moment. It's kind of a now or never situation, and that's why we're opting for surgery. When all is said and done, and you're two to three years out from the surgery, you're hopefully lost half the weight or so, what is the number one thing you're most looking forward to doing or accomplishing? Me and my wife love to travel, and, and we still do a fair amount of traveling. Like We go to VidCon every year. This will be our fourth year at this VidCon, uh, and, and we go out to L.A. maybe once or twice a year to the Game Awards and stuff like that, but that's only a fraction of the number of times we're invited places. We get invited to all over the world. We've been invited to Poland to visit uh, the folks at CD Projekt Red. We've been invited to, uh, to England to go to the Golden Joystick Awards. We've been invited to Seattle, Washington to tour the Xbox offices. And I've had to say no to all of that stuff because it's too expensive to fly when I need a second seat for myself. And it's just so physically demanding. It's not something I'm currently capable of doing. So I really want to travel a lot more with my wife to go to a lot more of these events. E3, BlizzCon, stuff like that, all at the top of our list. On top of that, though, me and my wife have been together for seven years. We've been married for almost four years now, and we've never gotten to take a honeymoon. We do a lot of work trips and stuff like that related to YouTube and stuff, but we've never just gone anywhere for the sake of going there, turning off our phones, leaving the cameras at home, and just spending a week together and enjoying ourselves and enjoying our marriage. That's the top of the list. That's the absolute number one thing I want to do. I also really want to have skinny people sex on my honeymoon. That's 
too much information I know. Sorry, I'm sorry. Are you still going to do Francis? I will still do Francis as long as you continue to watch Francis. That's the only rule. Uh, I think, obviously, being fat is a big part of the Francis character, but I think as he slims down and I'm able to move more and do more and smash bigger stuff and be more active and go to different places and do stuff, I think the character can still be very, very funny, and I hope that it will be. So if you're watching, I'm doing them. What will be the story behind Francis losing all the weight, and how will he act after surgery? We haven't decided 100% on what we're going to do. I think we might still just keep some of my old clothes around and make sure that it still looks nice and fat. Maybe we'll do some sort of fat suit or body padding or something like that. I think that could work. Uh, but beyond that, I think, I think the funniest line is that when Francis notices he's getting skinnier too, some people have suggested maybe he gets mad at Boogie for forcing him to lose the weight or mad at the sister for not feeding him or something like that. I think it would be super funny if he just pretends like he never did anything. He just, I, I just decided I didn't want to be fat anymore, okay? I didn't exercise. I didn't change what I was eating. I just stopped being fat. All the reason people are ever fat is because you want to be fat. I didn't want to be fat anymore, so I stopped. And I can only imagine delivering that line while sipping water out of a Mountain Dew can and driving people crazy. It should be super funny. Are you still planning on documenting the whole process? I remember Towley having surgery a while ago and recorded the entire thing, even from the operating room. Well, my doctor does know I make online video for a living, and he's agreed to be on camera a little bit. He has agreed to have us possibly film the operation if it's okay with the hospital. So that I definitely want to do. On top of that, every video I've recorded talking about this stuff has been part of, you know, what I consider to be the, the giant playlist that'll show you guys what I went through and what it was like and the stuff that was on my mind. Eventually, I think we'll take all of these videos and edit them down to in like one hour long thing and then maybe just like a five minute thing that shows like the transformation of the body to get people interested and hopefully spread the message of, of what it was like to go through the surgery, what the recovery was like, all of the whole nine yards so that people are well informed. I especially hope that we can dispel the notion that this is the easy way out uh, because you still have to do the diet and you still have to do the exercise. Um, it's also you have to in do an invasive life-threatening surgery. So it's definitely anything but the easy way out. And I hope that we can get that point across with the videos. Will you still drink Mountain Dew and eat Doritos? <laughs> I am more of a Coca-Cola guy than Mountain Dew. That's the truth of it. The Mountain Dew thing has always just been a part of the character shtick because they marketed to gamers, and so that was always part of the joke. Same with Doritos. I despise Doritos. They're my least favorite chip. I'm more of a salt and vinegar potato chip kind of guy. It was all just a part of an elaborate ruse. But those types of foods, no, they are definitely not part of a post-surgery uh, diet. In fact, uh, sodas and sugary stuff like that, salty stuff, fatty stuff, uh, all that type of different stuff, my body will not even be able to process anymore. So if I eat it, I might vomit it up or, or worse, I'll get violently ill as it tries to go out the other end. But that's one of the best parts about the surgeries that I can't process those foods anymore and they make me sick. Um, and in that place, they say your tastes even change. Well, your body wants and needs even changes. Even the stuff that tastes good to you in your mind uh, it becomes completely different. So that's one of the best parts of the surgery. I'll have to give those foods up for at least six months to a year. But at the end of that six months to a year, I'll probably never want to do them again because hopefully we'll have gone through that mental reset. What was your starting point that made you realize that this was real, that the surgery was absolutely something you had to do? Me and my wife did about a six-month stint on keto about three years ago. And, and during that period of time, I got down to just at 500 pounds for the first time since, I guess, I was 25. Uh, and then six months later, after going off of keto, trying to do a maintenance diet, but failing to do so, I had gained almost all of that weight back. And I realized that this is maybe the sixth time I've done that in my lifetime. And I realized that there had to be some sort of intervention. I didn't know if it was going to be therapy. I didn't know if it was going to be uh, some sort of reha rehab clinic. But I knew it would probably end up having to be surgery, and it, and it looks like it is. What is the recovery time? Well, physically, some people have some big complications of surgery, but most people are up and on their feet within 24, 48 hours. They're up and walking. Some people experience pain. Some people experience no pain. So basically, the surgery is fairly simple when it comes to recovery time and stuff like that. Uh, they say that it's not too different from having a gallbladder taken out in terms of recovery and uh, in terms of, of pain level. However, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with the surgery, a lot of complications. Some people spend the first year in and out of hospitals. Hopefully, we will get lucky, though, and we'll recover quickly and fast and well. But when it comes to food, it's a completely different matter because for the first two weeks before the surgery, I have to swap to a liquid diet, drinking a ton of protein shakes. For three days after the surgery, I can only have clear liquids. 
Uh, then for two weeks after that, I have to do the liquid diet all over again. Then eventually I can go to a puree stage where I'm having some food, but it has to be made very, very soft. So we're eating stuff like bananas and stuff. And after that six weeks, I can go back to some solid foods. But the best part about the surgery is for the next six months or so, I will not be able to eat much solid food at all. Only about an egg's worth of food, an egg-shaped sized portion of food at a single time. It'll be up to a year before I'm able to eat what most people consider a very small meal. One of the weirdest aspects about all of this, though, is that my doctor is very worried about stress. Now, while I do have my dream job, and it is the best job I've ever had, probably the best job I will ever have, it does come with a fair amount of stress when it comes to streaming and creating videos every day and constantly crunching stats and numbers and doing the back end. My doctor wants me to take a big step away from work for a little while for the first month. That might be something I'll be doing, less videos and less streams, but more exercise in its place. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, you guys will still be there when I get back. Boogie, I'm a fellow Arkansan, 6'3", 400 pounds, and I'll be 30 this year. I suffer from binge eating and food addiction. It's been a very real challenge. My wife has suggested gastric bypass in the past, but I've been too chicken shit to consider it. Uh, seeing your journey is something I'm now seriously considering. That's awesome, dude, but... You should talk to a weight loss surgeon no matter what, because weight loss surgery is kind of a last resort for people who have uh, morbidities and issues that are killing them. You probably don't even qualify for the surgery at your height and your weight and your current age, but there are a lot of different tools that that doctor can introduce you to, and hopefully one of those tools will get you on the right path. And let me also encourage you or anybody else to get into therapy, because I've been in and out of therapy my whole life, and therapists have worked wonders making my life and my brain a lot better. Uh, there's probably a reason you're 400 pounds pounds, dude. They can help you find that reason, eradicate it, and help you work on your weight through that. And there we go. I think that's the most frequently asked questions. I wanted to get to those. If you really enjoyed this video, the views are high on it, and, and you guys drop a lot of likes, then maybe we'll do a part two, and I'll answer more questions about this stuff. Because I know it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me, and I hope it's fascinating to you, because I sure have gotten a lot of questions about it. So I'm glad to answer those questions. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon. We're about uh, almost exactly two months away from surgery, so fingers crossed.